go. Hello friends, welcome to my channel for the editorial analysis of September 22nd. If you like the video, do hit the like button, subscribe my channel and also give your opinion. And friends, yesterday I couldn't able to upload the video. However, I will upload yesterday's editorial analysis and especially the geographical indication article was important yesterday and uh, I will try to cover that in detail. Fine. So, yesterday I couldn't able to upload the video because I had few works to do with my channel and uh, friends, from today you can see the channel name being changed. As friends, the name of the channel is going to be Republic IAS and from today the channel name is Republic IAS. Fine. So, as I told you before, it's because of the copyright issue which is going on with my channel so I had to change the channel name and I thank Aditya so who happens to be one of my subscriber I thank him for the support and the help which he provided by creating the logo for this channel so he happens to be the logo creator so thank you my friend and coming to the important editorial friends so if you look the taper timetable this article is all about the quantitative easing and federal trapping of the US government so I'll just give you a glimpse of this article because you need to know few important terms with respect to economy which can be useful in your examination so i'll just forecast only the importance from this article fine so and even freedom from fear is not important because this article is all about uh, a reporter was murdered so this article tries to be political in nature which is not important for us but however this article solving the afghans riddle so this article is an excellent article and even turn the page to a new chapter it's an excellent article so we will look these two article in detail fine and today is friday and you could see an argument in the Friday's newspaper. So, today it's with respect to the Sardar Sarovar Dam. So, I will just give you a glimpse of this argument. Fine. So, coming to the first article, taper timetable. So, friends, here the article mentions quantitative easing has concluded in the world's largest economy at least for now. So, friends, you need to know what is the meaning of a quantitative easing first. See, it is a monetary policy by the central bank of USA. Fine. So, it's like more amount of money is pumped into the market. So, I hope everyone knows how the money is pumped into the market. It's like the government will buy bonds or the central bank can issue more money into the market. The interest rate could be decreased. Fine. So, there are various ways of pumping money into the market and this is termed as quantitative easing. Fine. So, it is an expansionary monetary policy. Fine. So, this article say quantitative easing has concluded in the world largest economy. So, for some period, it is not that the government or the central bank is not going to go for quantitative easing but for a certain period of time this quantitative easing is stopped by the US central bank fine so this article say the federal reserve started the program of liquidity infusion through the purchase of treasury sec securities and it also purchased few assets so through this it pumped in more money making more liquidity into the market and it was during a global financial crisis fine and one more important point which with respect to this article is taper tantrum. So see friends, this taper tantrum is a term which is used to depict that there is an increase in the US treasury yields. Fine. So friends, again you need to know the meaning of Fed trapping. Fine. So as I told you before, quantitative easing is an expansionary monetary policy and this Fed trapping is an opposite to that where the Federal Reserve Bank will reduce the amount of money which which it was feeding into the economy or market. Fine. So, during the Fed wrapping, what happened was investors were panicked to these news and what they did is they bought out all the money out of the bond market. So, it's like the Fed wrapping is there, there will be a demand for money. So, ultimately, the people invested in shares got or started making money of the bonds which they hold and because of this, it increased the bond yields. That is bonds yields of the US Federal Reserve. Fine. So, this is taper tantrum. So, it's more than enough if you know these points. So, it's like you need to know what is the meaning of quantitative easing and you need to know what is the meaning of Fed wrapping and this taper tantrum. Fine. So, it's more than enough if you know these terms and the other points which is given in, in this article is not important. Fine. So, coming to the next article, solving the Afghan riddle. So, this article tries to say, Afghanistan counter-terrorism and defense ties will be the prime issue when the US 
defense secretary will come to india next month fine so however this is after the announcement of us policy on afghanistan recently see friends you need to know us policy on afghanistan i have just given you few important points which is more than enough if you know so first the us government announced that the us troop would stay in afghanistan for an open ended period of time fine so one could know that many terrorist organizations as its base in afghanistan so in order to suppress or in order to pursue terrorist the us troops will be present in afghanistan fine and even a statement was made telling that america would no longer tolerate pakistan's policy of harboring terrorist so it's like if a nation follows state sponsored terrorism then the us is not going to tolerate it and even a strategic partnership with india will deepen in the south asia so even this was stated and they also emphasized that india should make more financial contribution for the stabilization of afghanistan fine so america's strategic partnership will deepen in south asia and especially with india and even in the indo pacific region fine so you are the indo pacific region tries to say is that it is all about the south china sea and the indian ocean region fine so this is us afghanistan policy in crux so this article mentions this policy was announced recently and this blueprint was welcomed in kabul that is in afghanistan and it was criticized in islamabad fine so this policy applies more pressure on pakistan fine so it's like even the article tries to tell the same no early us withdrawal from afghanistan robust military action on counter terrorism and even a greater role of india so these three put a pressure on pakistan and it is for the first time the us president was so critical about pakistan fine so however previous presidents were also spoken about the pakistan lack of action but however the harshness which was shown by the present president is so strong and harsh fine so this article tries to say this important us strategy differs from the past because it could be with regards to the pakistan role in afghanistan and even a shift in the pakistan strategic priority towards china so one could know how pa- pakistan and china is closely engaged it may be with respect to cpec that is china pakistan economic corridor or even an investment in the pok region by the chinese government so in the economic dimension and even with respect to the political dimension one could see china and pakistan are coming closer together fine so this article mentions the situation in the afghanistan continues to be in fragile so it's like the issue is so threatened so this article tries to say even though taliban has a gains in afghanistan it is not a cohesive movement that is they are not united as a whole they have divisions within themselves and even one needs to know that since 1747 afghanistan territorial borders have remained unchanged fine so it indirectly tries to talks about the taliban's hold in afghanistan and it may be because of these or the advantages which they have with respect to the landscape forecast a fact that the territorial borders have remained unchanged since 1747 and this article also tries to talks about india afghanistan ties so first the article tries to say india afghanistan relationship is unique in its way because just after independence that is the after independence of india in 1950s india signed a treaty of friendship with afghanistan so this treaty permitted to open up consulates so it's like a consulate is a government office so it may be in the form of embassy so this was opened in each other's country by this treaty of friendship which was signed in 1950 and this article also tries to mention the fact that our prime minister jawaharlal nehru signed this agreement with the afghan ambassador in india to indicate the importance fine and even in 2011 india was the first country where afghanistan signed a strategic partnership agreement with so with respect to the afghanistan dimension it is india which is the first nation to have a strategic partnership with them fine so this article say the basic tenets of india's aims policy and approach towards afghanistan has remained unchanged so it's like we follow a same policy towards afghanistan it may be with respect to the bilateral relationship or it may be with respect to the regional cooperation so in each and every dimensions our policies aims and approach has remained unchanged and 
and especially with respect to Afghanistan. Fine. And India has always wanted a democratic, stable and strong Afghanistan to decide its own future. Fine. See friends, you could sense how important this point is. As one could know, maintaining a status quo over a long period of time is very difficult as one could see the example with respect to Nepal and even with respect to Myanmar. So, things changes but however, with respect to Afghanistan, it is not this year. Fine. And even this article say, India has a close strategic partnership with Afghanistan. We cover a broad spectrum of areas which includes political security, trade, ec economic cooperation as well as capacity development. So, this article tries to bring in few facts. So, it tries to say, India has aided and assisted Afghanistan in the defense sector. So, one could know about the helicopters which India has granted to Afghanistan and even the cumulative level of India's assistance to Afghanistan amounts to 2 billion dollars. So, India is always ready for more intensive bilateral relation with Afghanistan. So, it has been at the forefront with respect to the resistance and even for the reconstruction of Afghanistan and it is also in various sectors. Fine. And even a survey depicts that Afghan people ranked India's assistance as a most suitable one because of the positive role which India has played in the development program of Afghanistan. Plus, India's is also considered as a non-threatening nation for the Afghanistan because of the democratic tradition which we follow as a model. Plus, we also not have the matter of interfering into the internal affairs and this point is appreciated by the Afghans. See friends, here again I would like to add few more points. The parliament in Afghanistan was built with the aid of India and even the Salma Dam which is also called as a friendship dam was built in Afghanistan with the aid of India and even India and Afghanistan has signed air cargo trade. So, it is because of the resistance of Pakistan with respect to the truck trade. India and Afghanistan has also signed air cargo trade. Fine. So, it's like we have good bilateral relationship with Afghanistan in many dimensions. So, this article tries to say augmenting training and supplying of equipments for the Afghan national security forces is very much important to enable Afghanistan to protect its own interests and to maintain peace in the country. So, it's like they are in need of the equipments and the Afghans want more help. Fine. So, for instance, this article tries to talks about the Air Force. So, India could assist them in training and supplying these spare parts and also the equipments which may be of great need to the Afghanis. Fine. So, this article say Asia is a region of energy and resource. So, if you look from the Persian Gulf to the Caption Sea and Central Asia to Siberia, Russia, Far East, you could see this Asia is gifted with energy resource. Fine. So, this energy basket needs to be exploited for the benefit of Afghanistan and the surrounding region and TAPI that is Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India pipeline is one such example and even the SARC Shanghai Cooperation Organization is also a regional economic cooperation between Afghanistan and its neighbor which will aid Afghanistan in many ways and even the Charbahar port which we develop in Iran will help Afghanistan to increase its contacts with India and also the outside world. Fine. So, friends, here in the crux format, we saw India relationship with Afghanistan. So, I'll just give you the crux. Fine. So, first, you need to know the Treaty of Friendship which we signed in 1950s where we opted for the consulates in each other's nation and we have the tendency of non-interference and even we have aided Afghanistan in many ways. For instance, the defense and the equipments plus the Salma Dam and the parliament construction in Afghanistan plus we have been helping them in political security, trade, economic cooperation. We could also assist them in the security regime and especially the Indian stance on Afghanistan has been same throughout these years. So, it's not like there is a paradox with respect to the Afghanistan. We have been maintaining the status quo. Fine. And even in the multilateral forum, you could see that the Asia is provided or gifted with many energy and resources and this could be very much useful for the Afghanistan re-establishment and TAPI, SAR, Shanghai Cooperation Organization and even the development of Charbahar port is a aid to Afghanistan. Fine. So, this is the important points which we saw till now. And friends, again, I would like to add one more point. The Heart of Asia Conference is also again one of the important multilateral forum where it is focused towards improving the condition of Afghanistan. Fine. So, these are the important points you, which you can infer from this article and uh, this article also tries to say it is important that one should not interfere into Afghanistan and for this to happen the infrastructure of terrorism should be dismantled and for this to happen the Taliban's Quetta Shora and Kwani network who happens to be a terrorist and the insurgent group 
needs to be dismantled and this cannot end without action being taken so for an effective counter terrorism policy all the major terrorist group operating in the area should be considered as a single group and the us policy statement that the pakistan give safe haven's to the agent of chaos violence and war that is something which is called as state sponsored terrorism could help afghanistan in a certain way fine and even this article tries to say it is imperative to build in more measure to counter narcotics as one should know that afghanistan remains the world largest producer of opm which accounts for 90 percentage of the world supply so friends you need to know what is the meaning of a golden crescent fine so a golden crescent is the name given to the asia principal area of opm production so it's include afghanistan iran and pakistan fine so these are the three nations which is a part of golden crescent so this is just an extra information which i wanted to provide so as a part of golden crescent it produced for 90 percentage of the opm for the world supply fine so a success in this field could have a positive effect on all its neighbors because see you should not see opm as a illegal means of trade but however one could sense this as a economic benefit fine so this article say india is in a favor of a reconciliation process so it's like they want to restore the friendly relationship which has also gained the afghan support fine and even internationally this reconciliation is accepted so this article say india supports afghanistan quest for the peace and reconciliation and uh, even in the bond agreement of december 2001 embedded for the same thing that is to restore the peace and conciliation so friends again i just give you the glimpse of this bond agreement so see it was the initial series of agreement which was passed on 2001 and this intended to create a state of afghanistan fine so us had invaded the afghanistan fine so it is because of the terror attacks and uh, since no government had existed in afghanistan it, it felt necessity that they should have a transition period for a permanent government to establish fine so this bond agreement was signed so it is an agreement on the arrangements in afghanistan to re establish a permanent government institution fine so it is more than enough if you know these points so one should also know that the bond agreement is also with respect to the environment so if you know that write it in the comment box fine so the article say violence should end and for regional security that is a regional security in afghanistan there must be a closer involvement of regional powers in the international affairs so all the nations which borders afghanistan should also involve into the peace and reconciliation process in afghanistan so it is also important for india to coordinate its efforts fine so it's like we should bring in russia iran to ensure success and the us present policy will benefit this stance fine so this article also tries to talks about the india pakistan relationship so this article say unfair attempts have been made now and uh, there was an attempt to made to link the afghan issue with the india pakistan relation so this article tries to say there is no connection because this is not a triangle so if you study a pakistan afghanistan relationship since 1947 one could reveal that their relations have been thorny and have been in a sense of dilemma so in short it was unstable fine so they have many issues and even this article tries to talks about the brief taliban era so during this period there was some sort of peace between afghanistan and pakistan but however there was a difference on the issues like durand line so it's like their relationship have been unstable and it's not the same throughout the year so this article implicitly tries to mention here india pakistan relationship has nothing to do with pakistan afghans relation fine i hope you got the point so this is not the triangle so this article tries to say india and afghanistan have never exploited their friendly bilateral relation to harm pakistan because one could see india do not make anything or its decision is not with respect to the pakistan so we have our own diplomatic relation with afghanistan and it is not dependent on pakistan fine so this article tries to brings out three things so first it tries to say in 1965 and 1971 was afghan was not committed to it fine and it did not support india so even on the kashmir issue afghanistan has not publicly supported india and have not taken stance similarly india has also not entered into the debate on the durand line so friends according to wikipedia durand line is a international border between pakistan and afghanistan fine which was demarcated during the british era but however there is a dispute which is going on between pakistan and afghanistan because recently afghan's president have given open state 
statement that they will not recognize Durand line as the international border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Fine, so it has its own dilemma. And if you read NCRT or if you are used to the school maps which they used to depict you, then the Durand line is the border between India and Afghanistan. Fine, so in particular, it is the border between POK and Afghanistan. Fine, I hope you got the point. So, even in spite of India's interest in Durand line, India has not entered into the debate on the Durand line because as we saw, the conflict is going on between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So, this article clearly tries to mention this is not a trilateral relation. Rather, these are independent relation and all have their respective bilateral diplomatic relation. Fine. So, this article tries to say some instance in the last three decades also reflect the same viewpoint. So, neither India nor India-Pakistan relation were responsible for the situation which prevailed in Afghanistan. So, one could know that the Russian troops were present in Afghanistan and uh, however they were called back by the USSR. So, this scenario brought the country back to the medieval times and they brought the Taliban to the power and even Al-Qaeda, Osama Bin Laden in the region got the prominent. So, no extremist group is based in India or India do not have any connection. So, for instance, if you take Afghanistan, then Haqqani network, as we saw earlier, Taliban and even luxury Taiba to an extent has its base in Afghanistan. So, India has nothing to do with it. And even the operation for the Osama Bin Laden, the US killed the Osama Bin Laden and all sort of uh, technology were used and this has nothing to do with India or India-Pakistan relation. Fine. So, again, when Pakistan has shifted its security forces from the eastern border to the west border of Afghanistan, India did not exploit the situation. Fine. So, it's like India wanted a solution always. So, to blame India-Pakistan relationship for the situation in Afghanistan is not fair and it is not justifiable according to this article. Fine. And even it is truth to an extent. So, the root cause of the Afghan problem has been clearly stated in the US policy that is the recent announcement of uh, Donald Trump. Fine. And even in the UN General Assembly it was mentioned. So, so now Afghanistan and the region has to wait to see how it is implemented. Fine. So that's it with respect to this article. And friends, it's an excellent article. If at all uh, questions comes with respect to the India-Afghanistan relationship or India-Pakistan relationship, then you can directly use these points in your answer writing, which could be very much effective. Fine. And even I have given few factual informations like Golden Crescent and the Durand line. So these points can be useful if at all a question is asked in the prelims. Fine. So that's it with respect to this article guys and coming to the next article turn the page to a new chapter so this article tries to say during the BRICS summit which was hosted in Xiamen witnessed a meeting between Chinese president and Indian prime minister on the sidelines fine so this was the first after the Doklam standoff so this author tries to say he had the privilege of attending the meeting so it is also an important message of reconciliation and cooperation to the world in a timely manner according to this article fine so this article tries to say the outcomes of this meeting is beyond expectations. Both the leaders have agreed to start a new chapter. So, a consensus was brought in. It has reached it to enhance the mutual trust and it focused on cooperation and also this meeting has managed to settle down differences. So, both the leaders have agreed to conduct for a high level of exchange. So, they felt it is important to have a series of dialogues and mechanisms and they also forecasted to promote youth and education cooperation. Fine. So, President of China emphasized that one should be each other's development opportunities rather than a threat. So, it's like the dragon and the elephant should dance together. Fine. So, even a Prime Minister shared the same idea and believes that the political effects of making 1 plus 1 11 can be achieved in India-China relations. So, it's like both stated for a good alliance between themselves and they thought that they could be each other's opportunity. Fine. So, this article tries to say the meeting was scheduled for only half an hour but uh, however it was lasted for an hour or more. So, this shows the importance of the meet and uh, the important points which could be inferred from this article is the author feels that he has witnessed many ups and downs in India-China relation in this one year. Fine. So, it is now we are in a better position to understand the common aspiration and potential of our two countries for the cooperation and development. Fine. So, it tries to bring in a few dimensions which is very much important. So, first it tries to say with respect to the economic and trade cooperation last year the trade volume was 70 billion dollars. So, it's like 
exceeded 70 billion dollars fine so china has been one of the largest trading partner of india and more than 500 chinese companies have invested and started their business in india with a total investment of over 5 billion so even many indian enterprises like it pharmaceutical consultancy service have entered into chinese markets so there is also a sino indian software industry park in luni city at shangdun province fine so this is one dimension we have a good economic and trade cooperation second the people to people exchanges are also thriving for instance the mutual visits between the two nations have exceeded 1 million for instance it may be with respect to the tourism it may be with respect to practicing yoga or darjeeling has been an important tourist spot and even bollywood and the soft diplomacy has attracted chinese to a greater extent and even with respect to the education yunnan minzu university and india china yoga college and the annual indian tourism conference is also few dimensions which both the nations should look fine so even with respect to tourism we have greater potential and third is with respect to the local exchange so china and india have established 14 pairs of sister cities and provinces so one could know about a prime minister visit to Guangdong and even many Indian states were visited by the Chinese officials fine so see last year there was a sister city concept which was bought in where many Indian cities were compared with the Chinese cities and they forecasted for a greater development fine and this article also tries to bring in an example for instance the Kerala government introduced a rubber dam from China in Kerala fine and even many Assam gave their representatives in the Ongzu international tea exportations fine so it's like we have local exchanges and with respect to the communications even we have a good communication between us for instance it may be with respect to the multilateral locations like BRICS or even with respect to bilateral now Chinese economy is stable fine and India is also accelerating for instance make in India digital India startup India and even significant measures like GST have been implemented so now there is a scenario which is going which is against anti-globalization or trade protectionism. For instance, one could sense that the Brexit issue is there, that is the Britain exits exiting from European Union or even USA withdrawal from TPP. So, there is a sense of anti-globalization issue which is prevailing around the world and this should be faced by India and China working together. Fine. So, if the Xiamen consensus is reached, then it could bring in a good healthy bilateral relationship. Fine. So, this article as a conclusion says, both the nations have found to manage their differences and they have controlled the problems. For instance, the Dalai Lama visit to the border dispute has been controlled. Fine. So, it is a welcome move. So, friends, from this article, only the important points could be taken. For instance, the economic cooperation, the sister city concepts or even the tourism sector. So, these are important dimensions which could be looked upon from this article. And however, we have seen enough points with respect to India-China relationship. So, I can just give you a point format, a brief one. For instance, you could take the India-China relationship, then you can write about the Doklam issue standoff. You can write about the South China Sea. You can write about the Chinese influence in South Asia, Southern Asia. And even you can write about the One Belt, One Road initiative. And even CPEC was one dimension, China-Pakistan economic corridor, plus the India-Sikkim border, Nepal tilting towards the Chinese, and Chinese extractive policy is one sort of example. BRICS is one dimension. String of pearls is one concept. Fine. So, these are various dimensions which could be looked upon if you think about India-China relationship. So, I hope if you continuously follow my editorials, then you could have a knowledge about various stuff. But however, what I need you to do is write down answers. Because see, it is very much important to write a constructive answer in the point formats. So, writing practice will help you a lot. So, points accumulation alone will not going to help you. You need to structure down an answer. Fine. So, I'll give you a question. If possible, try to write the answer. So, the question is, bring out various dimensions of India-China relationship and the present status plus the Doklam issue is resolved now. So, what are the lessons is learnt by India from this Doklam standoff and why China is important to India and vice versa. Fine. So, if you write answers for these three questions, then I hope the India-China relationship could be holistically covered. Fine. So, that's it with respect to the Sadi friends. And the next news item is the argument with respect to the Sardar 
Sarovar Dam. So first I will give you the background of Sardar Sarovar Dam. Friends, this is a gravity dam on the Narmada River. Fine. So it happens to be in the state of Gujarat. However, it covers four Indian states that is Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Rajasthan. And uh, the foundation stone of this dam was laid in 1961. And uh, this project took form in 1979. That is, it started to produce electricity in 1979. And this dam was inaugurated by a prime minister recent fine so it has many potential but however this was resisted due to an NGO which opposed and even Supreme Court government gave a stay to this Sar Sardar Sarovar Dam because of the resettlement issue around the adjoining areas of this dam fine so the argument is related to that and friends this argument is important if you have geography as an optional because it contains many technical details about the cubic meters of water and so on which is not important from the current affairs point of view but however if you have opted for geography optional then I would request you to go through this article one fine so what I will do now is I will just give you the glimpse and uh, only the important points with respect to the general studies fine so first the left argue that one needs to have a clear cut assessment and the impacts of the dam so the project is still incomplete because large areas of canal has to be constructed and even the socio and the environmental benefit should be taken into consideration that is the environmental cost should be taken into consideration and there are many alternatives which is present to the Sardar Sarovar Dam. So this is not the only option available to us. Fine. And even its capacity of filling is not filled up to the maximum level. So we need to have an independent review of the project and uh, such reviews happened twice and in both the cases the outcome was the same that is it did not benefited much fine so the right argue yes this is a boon because it will benefit many farmers in the doubt prone region of Kutch, Saurashtra and so on and it could create a job opportunity plus the adjoining wildlife sanctuaries areas will increase and after completion many villages in Gujarat, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh will be benefited and even the relief and the rehabilitation work is taken by the Narmada Control Authority which happened to be a great cause of concern but however a relief package was provided and this is an intrinsic to water security fine so our food security and the energy security is also dependent upon the food water security and even it has many hydroelectric potential so what we require now is a storage capacity and this dam is the answer for that. fine so even the center argue after the 35 years of works many village have been submerged and many hectares of land has been acquired and the project still appears appears only in a form of promise. So it says the Sardar Sarovar project irrigates only less than a quarter of the area and it benefits only little land than its potential which is available. Fine and even many amount of investment has been done and uh, this article tries to say you are looking for the dam but however this is not the case which is available in Gujarat because Gujarat is a state which has its water potential from the groundwater recharge. So it is the groundwater recharge which is required and this distribution system is a failure because canal irrigation is not going to work in Gujarat because the aquifers are omnipresent over there and uh, the farmers are accessing through the wells and the tube wells. So because of the canal construction, the aquifers is not going to be benefited. See, aquifers happens to be the ground water table zone. Fine. So it's like here the water is stored. Fine. So it's like the canal construction is not going to help it. And as we saw earlier, the farmers use well and tube well as a major source of water consumption. So this canal construction is not going to help. But however, on the positive side, even the center argue that it has many storage potentials and uh, with this storage potential, the Gujarat can ensure that it can provide for water and livestock for the two successive droughts. So, but all these could happen only if it creates a distribution system that carries the water to every home and every field. Fine. So, canal construction alone is not going to help. But however, pipeline is also needed according to this article. Fine. So, it's more than enough if you know these points. But however, I would recommend you to go through it once if you opted for geography optional. Fine. So that's it with respect to this article, guys. And that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you for watching.